Hello, everybody. Wait, you can you can you can uh, start. Yeah, now. yeah. Hello. Yes. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, today we will continue for the fourth course, Introduction to the Quantum Feedback Control. And today we have, uh, the first day we will continue to introduce the input output model for the homodent detections. Uh, and, we, yeah, we sorry. Yeah. We could not connect for a while because there was, there was some issue and uh, technical issue. Maybe you can just wait two minutes and start from the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. About other people. Okay, okay. Did anybody else get the problem connecting? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it said the host yeah. at another meeting or something and I had yeah, to. Yeah, yes, because we have, we had, <coughs> sorry, um, uh, this is Flora. We had a guest lecture. The guest lecture is just finished. So we treat to, uh, we treat while treating to wait our lecture. Excuse okay. me, but the, the, the guest lecture, uh, just finished, now we can start without problem. Yeah, sure. So let's just wait then a little bit because people might get confused or whatever. Kind of, I, kind of, if I was confused. Okay. Just give two minutes, sorry about it. Okay, 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 no problem. I'm gonna start from the beginning because I, I didn't- Yes, okay, that. yeah, because so now I think everything, uh, everybody's connected. Uh, I, if there's waiting people, no, I think uh, so, where, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, Jad, but so uh, this is no problem. We just finished the guest lecture, and it's always difficult to mm -hmm. change. Okay, I think it's perfect. Everybody is already accepted. We can start. So it's up to you. Yep, I'll start family. So we. Oh, are you using your iPad, uh, wait, oh, what, what are you using today? Your iPad? Yeah, yeah, iPad, I try to use it. So, uh, and I I good, this is perfect, we receive, um, actually, Can you see the, the, um, the tabs at the Institute. I test this morning uh -huh. one um, for my class, it's okay. I think iPad is better, but so it, it is perfect. So your screen is mm. perfect today. You, can see good. Okay. Armen, Armen is just so. Armen is here. So now we can okay. start. Armen also joined us. Okay, perfect. And I have also the, the, the slides. I'm not sure, but it's the first time I tried with the iPad. So I have already, I have also this some slide. Maybe we can put it in the website in uh, the finished, at the end of the course. Okay, so we start. I think maybe everyone's here. So I I named you a co and a co host. So in case you have to change everything, so you are also you have also the control. Armen too. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Armen too and me will have the control. So you can also Okay, perfect. So we start now. Yeah, I think so. I think we can start. Uh, okay, okay, perfect. So today we will continue to introduce the quantum feedback control. Uh, the last time I have already introduced this, the several parts of the input output model for the homodent detection. And today I will finish this part and I'll try to uh, introduce the quantum condition expectation and the BS formula. Not the general one, but just uh, some special case. 
And if we still have some time, I will continue to introduce the quantum filtering theory, which is our purpose, uh, the final purpose for the first chapter. Okay, so let's start by the, the first term is input output model under the homodon detection, which means uh, for the HP equation, there's only uh, for this uh, differential equation, there are only the equation precise uh, and annihilation precise and time, of course, there's no gauge precise. And here is HP equation right here. And uh, just to recall that again, for the LT and LT star and HT are always bounded and precise. And in this form, sorry, and in this form, this is uh, it, which is X as an identity on the Hilbert space of the reservoir, and which X only as the bounded precise on the initial precise, uh, initial Hilbert space. Okay. Uh, excuse so me, uh, it seems yeah. that you are yeah. writing something, but we don't see anything. Is it normal or you are not writing anything? I'm are not you writing anything. Uh, ah, you yeah. Sorry. Can you Sorry. see? Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah it's okay. okay. I have already. Okay. okay. They Perfect. underlined something, I think. Yeah, I have underlined. Can you see what I'm underlined? I, I don't know. Okay. I can see. Yeah, fine. I can see. I can see that. Too. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So the solution for the HP equation is a unitary. It's a unitary operator. Okay. So and the last course, uh, of course, for the initial value is given by the identity for the U0. And the first, we'll consider the evolution, evolution of the system. And of course, in the Heisenberg picture, and it was denoted by the JTX and the quantum flow. given by the UTX. T, okay. Uh, last time I had already called that, uh, normally the UT is not the group, but we can construct a group correspond to the, uh, correspond to this unitary operator UT. And after some calculation, in fact, this quantum flow corresponds to the, uh, can describe the, the time of evolution in the Heisenberg picture, okay? And just by the quantum, E2 formula, we can obtain, oh, sorry. And we can obtain this differential equation. So here it's a, it's not star. Uh, normally, right is at the dagger. Okay, and the L star here is a, a joint lean blood operator. We just can calculate by the applying the quantum into formula on the quantum flow. We can obtain this equation. Okay, we have already introduced this part in the last course, and today we will continue to introduce the evolution, sorry, evolution of the field. And firstly, there is an important notation is, we call that the input noise. In the sum of the equation precise and annihilation precise. Okay, for the each one, we call that input field. And for the sum of the correlation precise and annihilation precise, in fact, it's essentially self-adjoint. Self-adjoint on the exponential domain, on the exponential domain. Okay, exponential domain. 
uh, which is the linear combination, the linear spine of all the exponential vector. So in the following, we will identify the input noise with its closure, okay? So which means now the, this input noise, it's a self-adjoint precise. It's our self-adjoint operator. And we have already introduced this precise in the second course, in the course of the uh, quantum probability. And we have already shown that it is the quantum Brownian motion because it is self-adjoint and commutative. Okay, so which means if we can apply the spectral theorem and we can obtain the classical Brownian motion. Okay. And next we define the, the output of the field and we call that observation precise. by yt, the beauty store, sorry, no, that is uh, zt, that is the input noise and ut, okay. We call this precise is observation precise. And this precise described the time of evolution of the output. Of course, it's also in the Heisenberg picture. Sorry, has in that picture. And we give the reference for this part. Namely, uh, for this part is, normally, as we said, the unitary operator is not a group. The unitary, sorry, the unitary operator, the UT is not a group. So in order to describe the time of evolution of the output field in the Heisenberg picture, we need some, some group property. And here is a reference in the Arcadis book. Arcadis book in the quantum theory and its stochastic limit in the chapter four, 26, okay. And we can find the, some detailed description how to pass the interaction picture to the, uh, to the Heisenberg picture. Uh, this development is beyond uh, the scope of this course, so I will not develop here, but we can find this description in this book. Okay. And so we have the output, the YT, observation precise, And next, I will give some properties or some results on the observation process. The first one is, or we have already seen that in the second course, is the input noise, the T. It's a quantum Brownian motion. So which means the, the T we call, we denoted this by Denote this by the, the fundamental algebra generated by the input noise. Okay. And this fundamental algebra is commutative. Because it's precise, it's commutative, okay? And we have already showed that in the second course. So this lemma one, uh, next. Okay, the very important lemma, the very important result, which is called self non demolition property for the observation precise. I denote the yt and the fundamental algebra generated by the process of observation. So, That is commutative 
for OT belongs to D1 T. Where is T finite? And why it is useful? Because if we have this property, the self non demolition property, and we can transform the observation precise, this is a quantum precise, by the spectral theorem, we can translate this to uh, classical stochastic precise. Precise. And we can also ensure, we can also ensure that the, the observ observation precise, the YT can be measured. Can be measured in a single realization, realization, okay, in the lab experiments. So this property is very important for our observation process, for our the real physical experiments. And I will give the proof. The proof is very easy. We first define a projection belong to this phenomenal algebra generated by the input noise. Yes. And this is any arbitrary projection in the range of the spectral measure of the input noise. Okay. I denoted the spectral measure or the spectral projection or the projection, spectral projection. So this is a projection. Of course, it is always bounded. Then we can just apply the quantum, quantum E2 formula on the evolution of this projection. Okay. And then we can obtain and then this integral equation And this is again, it's the adjoint of the lean blood operator. Okay. And we can see that there's the observation, the E, the projection is always in the form, in this form, okay. And for the every observable, sorry, for the every system observable, the system operator, for example, L and H, in the adjoint linear blood operators is always in the form like this. Of course, obviously, these two operator E and L uh, commutative is commutative. So from that, we can see easily that G T E. Okay. For every is between the zero and the T. And by the bounded functional calculus, we have the spectral measure or the spectral projection of the up output precise, uh, sorry, the observation precise, where it's written in this form. The U here is the solution of the HP equation is a unitary operator, okay? So we have already finished our proof. We can see that the fundamental algebra generated by the observation precise, Ys, Yt, okay? 
is commutative. Okay, so the first property is called self non demolition property. Uh, we have also the second one. Three is called non demolition. I mean, the quantum flow, the quantum flow belongs to belong to the YT, the fundamental algebra, the com com uh, commutative fundamental algebra generated by the observation process is commuted. Okay, for any x not to h s the bounded operator on the hyperspace h s, and we always suppose our hyperspace h s is finite dimensional. And for any t belongs to the zero and the t and the t the finite. Okay, and the proof is almost the same. Okay, it's very easy. It's almost the same as the as the one in the proof of self non demolition property, and why? This one is also important because if we the if our quantum flow commute with the observation precise, and we can define the joint statistic of the system event and observation. And in fact, in mathematically, it's important because we can define, it's necessary for us to define the quantum, quantum conditional expectation. Okay. I'll give the a very quick proof for the non-demolition proof property because we have already seen that the yt from the algebra generated by the observation process is in this form. Okay, this dt is the algebra generated by the input noise. And our gt, the quantum flow, so in this form. So which means uh, for every bounded operator in this form commutes with the fundamental algebra generated by the ZT because the T is in this form, in fact, okay. Okay, so of course, obviously, the GTX is in the commutant of the YT. Okay, so I have already shown you the two properties for our observation precise. The first one is self adjoint property. Uh, sorry, the first one is the self non demolition property, and the second one is non demolition property. And next, we will pass to the second part. Conditional expectation. And base formula. In the first course, I've already shown you the, the classical filtering theory. The classical filtering theory. If we cannot obtain the, the complete information of our system, we have only the partial information of our system. And what we should to do is the, 
we want to find the best estimation based of the system based on our observation, okay? So, and we have already showed that the best estimation is the conditional expectation. So the first thing we need to do is, we need to, sorry, we suppose our probability space for the classical one is omega f and p. Firstly, we need to define the, the conditional expectation, classical conditional expectation, okay? I suppose that J is a sub sigma algebra of the F. And next we show this conditional expectation is the best estimation in the L2 sense. Which means And then we need the Bayes formula. Sorry, I, I recall that again. For our, what are we concerned in this course for the filtering theory? Normally uh, the two approach, oh, sorry. Excuse me, Richard, I think in, uh, in point two, you need to square that, right? The, that difference. X minus the initial expectation squared is the minimum. Yeah, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, square here, yeah, sorry. Uh, for the filtering theory, what we normally is two approach. The first one is innovation approach, and the second one is a reference probability approach. And here we focus only on the reference probability approach. Uh, reference probability. Which means we, because the, the best estimation has already defined by the conditional expectation. But maybe sometimes it's not easy to obtain the explicit expression for, the, for this expression, okay, for this conditional expectation. What we want to do is we want to uh, transform this conditional expectation to another one, to another conditional expectation on the, uh, some another probability measure, and which can simplify our calculation. This is why we call that reference probability approach. So for this transformation, we need to use the Bayes formula. Sorry, the, the E expectation E corresponds to the, correspond to this probability measure, okay? And this one corresponds to the new probability measure Q. And the M and the random equal time derivative. It's perfect. And next, the problem is how to define the new, the new reference property. And we need to define the new property, the reference property. We need to use the Jacksonov Jacksonov theorem. We can define the new property, the DQT, okay, by this random nickel time derivative. And the next, which is called Colin Piastri Bell formula. E here. Sorry, in step four, where's the dependence on t? When you say mt is the derivative of yeah, q. Yeah, yeah, sorry. To q. yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Here is a t, the q, the new probability measure depends on t. Okay. 
and so, the uh, current... and just again coming back to this question of uh, Renault, uh, so this is true for any t or uh, what? So in in the previous formula in number in number three, you had mt or three. no? The here is a general one, in fact. Ah, okay, okay. So so in the in the all oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. We can apply. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Here's a general one, and this, in fact, for the from the the fourth equation, we we, we come back to the real uh, the real system with the precise. Okay. So normally, uh, okay. Okay, thank you. And here the Kalim Pierce Bell formula. In fact, it's just the Bayes formula. It's just Bayes formula, and we're because normally what we introduce, uh, what we interest it's not just it's not just the variable, it's some function of the variable. Okay. We can find the first estimation of the function. Next T. And this algebra is a sigma algebra generated by the observation process. The yt is observation process, okay. And the QT okay, and the MT is defined by the Jusanov theorem, it's here. For the last part, we have already defined by the applying the the Kalim Pierce Fell formula. We can obtain this equation, this expression, and the next is to obtain the explicit expression of this uh, conditional expectation. Okay, and here what we used is called Kushner Stratonovich equation, and which can help us to obtain the an explicit expression denoted by the pi tf equals to this expectation. Okay. In fact, it's exactly this one. And we call this one is optimal. We call this one, uh, sorry, we call this one is optimal filter. And this is the classical procedure for the filtering theory. And what we want to do is we want to copy the almost the same procedure in the quantum case. Okay, so the first things we need to do is to define the conditional expectation. And of course, we, we don't want to define the very general case, the general case for the, for the conditional expectation in the fundamental algebra. What do we use, what do we need? It's not so general. So we want to add some restriction on our definition, our notation of conditional expectation. And I will call that, I denoted this conditional expectation by the, the phi, by this map. Okay, and this is the sub-algebra. B is the sub-algebra of the A. And uh, this is our quantum probability space. The A is the total fundamental algebra and the phi is a normal state on this algebra, okay? And the B is a sub-algebra of the A. And the first one is, we suppose the observation, what do we condition on must be commutative. And which means the observation condition on correspond to the B here. Okay. 
which means the B, the algebra B, must be commutative, which can ensure that the observation can be realized, can be detected, can be measured in a single realization, okay? And for the second one, is a condition observable must commute with the observation. The condition observable corresponds to the the operator here. And this part, we add this restriction because we want to define the joint statistic between the observable and observation. And someone maybe mentioned that the first one corresponds to the self non demolition property, okay? And the second one corresponds to the non demolition property, which means the restriction is very satisfied our, uh, prop, uh, our system, okay? Because what in our system, we have already this two, uh, two nice property. So th this restriction is no problem for us. So we'll give the definition quantum. One, the first, the first uh, definition. Denoted the I and Phi as our quantum probability space. And the B is a commutative. the von Neumann sub algebra. Then we define a map. Define a map. From the commutant of B to the B. And this map is called a version of quantum conditional expectation given B, okay? And if this map satisfy, this property. for all s in the B and for all x in the B commutant. May, may try, I'm confused a little bit about this definition because if you assume that the B is commutative and if you assume yeah. that it commutes with B, this is just a classical definition, so I, I don't really understand. Exactly. What, what is quantum? Exactly. Uh, not yet. Uh, not yet, okay, okay, sorry. Exactly, is is exactly the the classical one. Because we, we don't need the real quantum, the real non-commutative one. Uh, this one is already enough for us. So of course, very nice comment. If we want some general definition, and maybe we have some reference. I think most people here would know what a, what a quantum conditional expectation is. It, it is just that, I mean, this is completely classical. So kind of, I would not call it quantum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 exactly. Because, because uh, what we're concerned is only the very simple case, okay? So we add a lot of assumptions here, a lot of uh, hypothesis here. So it's exactly, in fact, it's exactly the, the, the classical one. And this is why I said uh, I introduced the, at the beginning the classical filtering theory because it's almost the same one.
Okay, so we have this definition. We call that the quantum expectation one. Uh, of course, we give some lemma. Uh, the existence and the uniqueness is well defined, of course. It's well defined because we can just apply the spectral theorem and the uniqueness and existence of conditional expectation in the classical case is well defined. So the here we call that the, the quantum conditional expectation is well defined, okay. One, uh, of course, we can show that we call the very similar uh, argument. We can show in this case, in this toy model, we have the optimal estimation. Which means for every Okay, and the, sorry, the, the norm here is defined by this one. Okay, has the definition of the norm. Uh, the proof is exactly to the classical case, okay? It's just uh, the exercise of the linear algebra. So I will give not the proof here. And perfect in this in this commutative case, I will give the base formula. We we'll call that the formula one is in the space and the B is commutative then we choose we choose the observable we choose sorry we choose the the operator in the commutant of b b is commutative and we call this operator and the change of state operator. Such that it's positive, strictly positive, and close to one. Then we can define a new normal state, omega, on the commutant of the B, okay, by this expression. And the omega x, the conditional expectation satisfy this relation. And this one, we can see that this one is very similar to the classical classical uh, base formula. Okay. I'll give the sketch of proof and just show the, for the second part. Okay, we write the expression in this form, and the k, k 
between in this commutative, in this commutative the uh, algebra B. And then just uh, by the strict calculation, right in this form. Okay, so we can obtain that. Equals to zero, okay? Because we can just choose the K at this form and then we be a square, okay? We can then we reobtain the base formula, and as we said, this is a very uh, simple case because what we introduced the, the change of state operator here, change of state operator here, it belongs to the commutant of the commutative algebra, which means the change of state here is bounded. But in fact, if we want to apply the the quantum future theory, you want to use this theory, theory uh, only bounded change of state operator is not enough for our purpose. So we need to generalize to the unbounded case. So the first delay, I'm going to do the, also the similar one, but we can generalize to the, the quantum expectation to the unbounded case, okay. the second definition for the unbounded case. That of course, will not treat the very difficult, uh, very complex unbounded case. In the second course in the quantum probability, we have already introduced the, the two special cases of unbounded operator. The first one is the, the set of, uh, self, a set of all self-adjunct operators, which are affiliated to a commutative algebra. And this set forms a commutative star algebra uh, under some the plus and the point. We call that head point. Okay. For this is no problem. We can do the multiplication and additive as we wished. So we will generalize our conditional expectation to this case, to this special case. It's enough for our purpose. We define the quantum property space. And of course, it's always commutative. And let X affiliate it. Okay. To the uh, commutant of the B, and which is self adjunct Moreover, in order to well define the word, we suppose it's finite. And then any arbitrary self adjunct operator affiliate to, to B. And such that for any is scored equals question left. Quantum conditional expectation. Okay. 
as I said, uh, just to keep the remark. That this is uh, this all self adjunct operator affiliated to the fundamental algebra X and B. Okay, because X uh, affiliated to the commutant of the B. So this one. It's commutative. And this forms star algebra. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's contain the identity, the unit. Under the the head plus and head point, okay. And in order to show the the existence and uniqueness, and just as a comment of the Vulcan, is exactly the classical case, okay. We can use the spectral theorem or transform it to the classical case and apply the, the existence and the uniqueness in the classical conditional expectation. Then we can show that this is well defined, this conditional expectation. Okay. Perfect. And our objective here. Is to, to find the Bayes formula. Find the Bayes formula for the unbundled change of state operator. Okay. Because in the quantum stochastic calculus uh, created by the Husen and the Paradasi, they show that. For the solution of the HP equation, if and only if it is satisfied that coefficient and the solution is bounded. But in fact, in our case, what we need may not satisfy that, that uh, form. So we need to, to find the base formula for the unbounded change of state operator. And here I will follow the same. I will follow the, the treatment at the, in the studies of von Handel's. Uh, firstly, I will give some citing, basic citing of the for our joint system. Uh, the hyperspace for the joint system is denoted by the H. Okay, the H is the HR, R is the reservoir. Uh, always suppose our system H is, is finite dimensional. And the HR is superbial. And for the total fundamental algebra, the tensor product of these two uh, bounded operators and the state on A. So we have defined the quantum probability space. And then moreover, okay, we define the BR is a sub algebra uh, of the BHR, and we suppose it commutative. Which means the strict consequence is this fundamental algebra uh, 
the commutant of this algebra, okay? And because our H is, is finite dimensional, so the bounded operator on this is usable fit to a matrix, okay? And the state can be always written in this form. Where the row is the density operator and X is in the, is a matrix with the interest, the, the complex number. Due to this isomorphism, then we can write up the total uh, fundamental algebra in this form, okay? And which means for any observable or any, sorry, operators in A can be written in this form. And every element is observable in the BHR. And of course, we can write our state in this form. But to make sure they try, not, not everything is diagonal. You have all diagonal parts here. No, 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 it's not diagonal, sorry. I just- uh... It looks diagonal the way you wrote it. Oh, sorry, it's my problem, uh, sorry. Well, so here, uh... what, uh, I, this is X row, row to trace, okay, okay. Okay, so it's a little bit row, row, I don't know, kind of, it's, it's everybody understands, it's just confusing this. Row S is- trace. Yeah, it's my, S, but, yeah, it's my problem. It's not, it's not agonized. It's just a matrix. It's just a matrix, okay? When you introduce the density of rho, it's not completely, I mean, it's, it's, it's clear what you mean. It's just not written. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I, I try to write it. Okay. So we can write the state in this form. Uh, next, a very important notation is we call that the partial state. We, call that, uh, we define the, the partial state. Partial state of the, the total state, we call that total state, okay. We just uh, denote that for any x in the total fundamental algebra A, and we define this partial state phi r x. Oh, sorry. Just. Okay. And for the phi s x, each or. It's similar to the, the when we in the classical probability theory, we calculated the, the, the marginal distribution, okay? And also when we derive the master equation, we have the partial trees. It's almost the same definition. And in our case, in fact, it's very, it's very simple because uh, in the following, in the quantum filtering theory, what we are introduced. In fact, for the phi r, for the state, for the, the state in the reservoir, it's just a vacuum state. It's just a vector, okay, the vacuum state. It's just the, the, the vacuum vector. And for the state on the system, in fact, it's just, it's always finite dimensional. So it's just the, the finite linear combination of the, of the vector. So it's very easy here. But if we want to fold also this, this works for the general case, and there's the reference maybe for the general case, the Tomiyama. 
in the Tomiyama mass paper in the, on the Tyson pro, uh, Tencent product at the fundamental algebra. Okay. The Fonoyman algebra. In this paper, I will show that. It also works for the general case, but we don't need the, the general definition. The this one is, works very well for us. It's enough for us. Okay. And as I said, we need to face the unbounded operator. We have already treated the unbounded operator, self adjunct unbounded operator, with a affiliated to the a committed fundamental algebra. And here, we need another class of unbounded operator. It's a normal state, okay? We have already introduced this in the second course. We call that the all normal operator affiliated to the BR. BR is commutative. It's commutative. So this one forms a commutative star algebra on the, sorry, okay. And then we have a, uh, obvious extension okay which is the matrix and each entry is the nbr valued element and of course this forms a star algebra on the obvious extension okay And this part not over in the lecture too. Okay, next, our purpose is we want to find the state. We want to, sorry, we want to uh, find the base formula for the state. Uh, Excuse me, Trav, when you say all normal operators, what do you mean? Just arbitrary bounded normal operators, or what do, what do you mean here? No, it's not bounded, it's yeah. affiliated. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. So did, yeah. I, did you say that I, or I missed it because I, I broke my glass? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, it's my problem. So I mean, so this is a big difference, right? So, right, so yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right? It's unbounded, yeah. Maybe unbounded. In fact, what we need is unbounded. Right. This is why I do this generalization. It's a commutative algebra. You have to be able to compose those operators. And, uh, uh, and how, why, do you, why can you compose those operators? The, I don't understand your question, sorry. Well, Which... It's commutative star algebra. That means I can take these operators and compose them and get another normal operator because they have to be able to move. Uh, no, no, no. No, it's just the... Uh, but you the, said uh, it's star algebra. Huh? It is a yeah, yeah, it's a commutative star algebra, yeah. Yeah, but why can I compose those things? The Which things, you mean? Well, two normal operators, I have to say what is A composed with B. If they're unbounded, you need something. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Uh, okay, okay, okay. The the affiliated mean for, for me here is just the, the because the normal operator we can decompose the self adjunct operator, right? And uh, for the self adjunct operator, we just uh, for the every the spectral measure or the spectral projection is the uh, contents in this algebra in this commutative algebra BR here, and I call that affiliated. And for the all the normal operator affiliated to, to the BR, we can uh, uh, we can form a commutative the star algebra. Okay, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. you mean there is a spectral first, first. What you probably mean, what do you mean by mm -hmm. you, there is a spectral theorem for normal operators because you can write a normal operator as a pair of commuting self-adjoint operator. That's probably what you mean. Okay, mm -hmm. so something is confusing here. You didn't explain well, but it, it, it does not matter. Let us continue. Okay. Okay. Continue. okay. And so we can 
uh, from this the algebra for this new one, okay, with the, uh, the, the obvious extension of the these two operator uh, these two op operations, and then we have the. Content based formula. The second block. The first, let the V to this algebra. Okay, this is always the commutative. Such that. to one and the four for x br okay we define the omega x like that we the omega is the normal state. Sorry. Oh, on this algebra, and moreover, if we have this one. Which means the this is strictly positive. Then we have the this formula, uh, BS formula, BS formula like expression. for all x in this algebra okay and i because the v star v is always self enchanted so i just uh, uh, neglect ignore the the head point here i'll give them proof the first one for the definition the well defined sorry Well, the definition of the state is almost the, we can just follow the standard argument and we can find this part, for example, in the Vonderman handle studies. It studies, sorry. They give very detailed description, so. And it's not not so difficult, and uh, yeah. Oh, what? Sorry, I can't. Uh, sorry, uh, I can't listen. What did he give? What is in this thesis on the page one seven one oh eight? Ah, uh, they give the. Ah, uh, sorry, in the studies in this page, the they define the why that this state is normal. The just the, uh, show the normality of this state. Oh, I see. The new so, state. Oh, uh, uh, this new state. In fact, it's not, it's not difficult, so, but it's quite long. We need to use the spectral theorem and the part to the, because it's unbounded, so we need to use the, the spectral theorem and we pass to the classical case. And in that case, it's well defined, so we come back again. So something like that. But it's, it's, in fact, it, it, it's completely trivial. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is why, yeah, so, I don't give the, but in the, I have yeah. to say, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, this is why I, I, I don't give the develop the talk here. And for the second one, maybe it's more interesting for us. Uh, and of course, we'll use it in the in later. Just right. Uh, sorry. 
Okay, for the full. Bah. Sorry, sorry, my problem. Okay. And we define the the k, the operator k in this form. The kr, kr is operator x on the, the hr for the reservoir, the part of the reservoir, okay? And which belongs to the identity, of course, the br. br is always commutative and x Okay, and x in this algebra. Mm -hmm. And because the kr is in this form, in this special form, and the, the uh, sorry, the, the k is in this special form, and the kr belongs to the commutative algebra, fundamental algebra, the br, so, this one is always commutative with, with V, okay? So we can write in this form, which means we just put the KR in this parenthesis. And by the definition of the omega, what we define here, which I change the form, okay? And that is our phi, epsi, sorry, our psi, and you the new definition here you have this one. And by just by the definition of what I introduced in the quantum conditional expectation, and we extend again, we come back to the, the CRPCS again. Yeah, I think it's in the part of the this one, okay. And then, because again, this is all we can write in the form, something like that. Okay. And the K is always in this, in this form. We just put it outside. Uh, we have and due to the commutative again V and the omega X the KR. Okay. So we obtain this form which means we can see that there is is and the omega just on the br well this relation so normally it's finished we can obtain this relation right we just add identity in the the first part okay Here we finished the introdu uh, introduction for the quantum BS formula. And I just uh, quickly introduced the, what we need to do in the quantum filtering theory, okay. We have the, yeah, uh, sorry. We have all, 
already all the tools, what we need, mathematical tools, what do we need to derive the quantum filtering theory? Uh, now, I just give the, some flow the, to introduce what we need to do in the following. We've already introduced the, the input field, which characterized by the, the two precise, annihilation precise and equation precise, okay. Then after interaction with the input field with the system, and then we can obtain the quantum flow In the Heisenberg picture, this is the HP equation. And then we can obtain the output field. We just denoted the output field like that, okay? And by the Homodyne detection, we can obtain the observation precise. Observation precise is a YT. The ZT is the sum of the annihilation precise and equation precise. Now we pass to the filter. And by using the what we define for the quantum conditional expectation. Sorry, I give the the quantum property space for the observables on the X uh, on the HS. Okay. And in the following, what we want to do is to destroy, to obtain an explicit expression for this conditional expectation. And I think maybe I will introduce this part in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, there are a number of people yeah, I think who are really experts. Uh, I mean, so here in your formula, JT of X, uh, uh, gamma of T will be commutative and JT of X will also commute with every element of gamma of T. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, what I call the non-demolition uh, non property. Not with that kind of, because, you know, I mean, the, I mean, I have a, a, to be honest with you, I have a real issue with this. And, uh, and it would be very interesting to see what Tristan and, and people who have, uh -huh. Exposed to this before. Okay. So my real issue is that what people really do not like, I mean, something that is very, very simple and made complicated for no obvious reasons. And, uh, and that is exactly what happened to me, in my opinion. Because uh, you basically okay. written a completely classical theory, something completely classical, something that, in the, and you just yeah. added quantum and you have just changed the mm -hmm. notation so that people sort of who have not seen that before get confused that they think it's something else, but it is not something else. And so I would have done this personally very differently. I would present this a completely classical thing and then just mm -hmm. adopt the terminology if I need to couple that to something quantum. So, mm -hmm. so, so why, why it is done like that? Kind of why, 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 why? Uh, it upsets people who do non commutative stuff, stuff for this reason, because you see, if you want to learn the non commutative stuff and you're a probabilist and mm -hmm. you put all the effort to do so, and it takes a long time, you open the books and you learn, you know, Bratelli, Robinson, whatever. And then you do that and then you go to, to the theory and you realize that all that was for nothing because you're actually never using anything profoundly non commutative. So, no. so why something like that kind of maybe, maybe, maybe Laurent or Francesco can explain that to me. Well, they don't want to explain this one. 
I don't know who, who do you want to answer? Well, I mean, either of you, I kind of, you know, I mean, kind of, kind of, you know, kind of, it's a little bit like, for example, I've, I've been very critical in the past, and for example, people use modular theory and then write, write a paper, and then it turns out that you actually do not need anything of that. You just can write everything in terms of just ordinary probability theory. And so, so kind of, if you're going to use a machine, there has to be a reason. And otherwise, what? Kind of, you know, otherwise it just, if you're introducing a language kind of that has to be a reason that you have to see where it comes in where that why not introduce here completely classically and then just say okay now here's a quantum one couple to classical thing where is the where is the quantum come where is the quantum maybe gonna come somewhere in the future that i don't see here okay so i in one answer so i uh, i partly agree with your criticism i think that the quantum formalism is used uh too much but you have to start from it you have to start from from a quantum stochastic calculus uh, because you don't have access to. I mean, you cannot formulate the quantum stochastic calculus uh, from as a classical theory. Um, for uh, like to basically from physical text perspective, you start with your weak coupling, then you get uh, quantum stochastic calculus, and then you do filtering on your stochastic calculus. But, Indeed, once you condition on your um, on your commutative Vandermann algebra, like most of the things are classical, but you have to have an identification between classical and quantum. And typically, going from this unitary U to some operators that are actually uh, expressed in terms of classical uh, stochastic processes, and so. To do this manipulation is not completely obvious all the time, and so you have to be careful about uh, how you do it. But indeed, uh, most of the time, people, I think, for my test, use the quantum formalism to and the quantum size of things to, uh, for too long in presentations. But now, do you think that there is a real quantum counterpart that is there? It is just maybe too complicated or too difficult or too technically undeveloped in order to really use it, but it could be relevant. I mean, it depends for what purpose. That's well, what, what we do here what is, is just that you have, uh, so you have uh, unitary, uh, unitary operators that modify your uh, Vandermann algebra, your commutative Vandermann algebra. And that maps your commutative on the algebra to a commutative on the algebra. And you want to condition um, the, your states on the values taken by the random variables that correspond to your commutative on the algebra. Okay, so, so let me then try to change my question. So this commutativity partly comes because you have taken all these sort of limits that, uh, that uh, that if you were looking at a microscopic picture and trying to do this sort of from the first principles without actually taking the limits, there would be an inherent memory there. And this memory would, would make things genuinely not commutative. Uh, no, I don't think, I think it's two different things. You, you have like one side is the memory, the Markov approximation or not. And the other side is if it's commutative or not. When it's committed, why do we have a commutative on the algebra? It's just that we condition them to commutative on the algebra because when you measure a physical observable, it's a commutative on the algebra. You cannot measure non commutative on the algebra I because see. you can't measure two non commutative things together. I see. So, uh, so, you, so, you, uh, so, your restriction to the commutative, so, so, it, so basically, it is a if you're saying it is kind of if I have in just an ordinary spectral theory, if, if I have a if I have a self-adjoint operator and to make a measurement, and then then you know I have a spectral measure and then everything becomes classical anyway. And then because but the, right, so it's uh, easy, I mean, but if kind of and that you have to do it because unless you do something like like a repeated point of measurement, you have no choice. Yeah, yeah, but basically you can formulate everything like that we talked about with a discrete, uh, discrete spectrum uh, 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 in fine dimension I mean, without field. You do everything without field, just with uh, in two finite dimensional uh, Hilbert space, and you, you can formulate everything. There's that the mathematical definition in infinite dimension is harder, and you have to 
be more careful about the way you manipulate things and, uh, and the definitions. But besides that, it's, you can do everything and exactly the same thing with finite dimension, and you will get back what you obtain when you do repeated movements and with the definition of quantum factories in, uh, for example, in time in uh, repeated. Okay, so. I mean, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, okay, so, so, you know, it's, uh, uh, I mean, in a certain, I mean, I, I agree with you that you have to do the, the, the quantum stochastic calculus if you're going to consider the things at the same time. But he did not, uh, what, what they meant, you know, quantum Brownian motion and then, and then, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, the non commutative the non-commutativity did not come up here yet. It has to come uh, somewhere uh, because uh, so far, I mean, it was just a classical, everything was commuting. It was classical Brownian motion. Yeah, yeah, but what you, you condition onto some things that maps to classical Brownian motion. It's basically a multiplication operator by a classical Brownian motion. That's all of those uh, results on this kind of stuff. Um, but I think even before all of it was not. So maybe uh, we understand better as we proceed. I mean, kind of, you know, I, I mean, I kind of, you know, I mean, we have some real probabilities here in the audience like Wachagan and, uh, and, and, and uh, Armen and so on, who didn't have an exposure to quantum stuff before. And so, so, so this may look, uh, uh, there might be a language barrier there, which maybe should not be there kind of, you know, it's, uh, but uh, I mean, where, where, where quantum came so far is, is very, very, very elementary. And if you want a short answer to this, and I, I'm sorry, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit confused, I'm a bit tired right now. Um, just that the quantum part comes from the fact that you can see this as a non commutative generalization of uh, Gersanov transform. So you take your Brownian motion, when you do a classical uh, Gersanov transform, uh, you just take a diffusion, let's take like uh, just a constant uh, drifts and um, volatility. And you get uh, on the same relativity, a constant drift, and you get like an added drift to your uh, to your Brownian motion. When you do it quantum in this quantum uh, setting, meaning that this use this unitary is defined with um, some noises that do not commute with the Brownian motion you are looking at, then you won't get like this kind of constant drift. And the only way to formulate everything classically is to go through quantum trajectories. And so that's where this the quantum part comes in. What do you call quantum trajectory in what he has defined so far? Um, OK, the so dual of uh, pi of t. Here you have pi of t, which is basically the, the evolution of the conditional expectation of x, which is an observable on the system. Then from that, uh, you use a duality uh, with uh, density matrices, and it defines you a process on the density matrices. OK. Okay, so, and that, that's what you would have, right. And then, and then basically you would like to formulate Gersanov formula with respect to the fun. Okay, okay, so, so, so thank you for that explanation. So you would like to formulate a, a Gersanov formula with respect to the family, just like in spectral theorem, kind of you associate a measure, but then you have to specify kind of in what setting you need a vector. So here you're kind of doing the Gersanov formula with respect to the commutative subalgebra, but, it, but this commutative subalgebra may change and will change. It will change because you, basically, UT does not commute with your uh, commutative algebra. Basically, yes. If you commute with your commutative algebra, then you're done. But since it does not commute with your, your commutative algebra, you, it's, it's, you won't be able to express it classically. Unless you go. Basically, that's about a. What I missed from his presentation is that it's commutative, uh, because, but I, maybe I just missed it because I broke glass on my table, so I have to deal with the mess. So, so it's uh, so if uh, the, at a different time, this commutative subalgebra will not commute with each other. No, they commute with each other. So yes or no? <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, reach out. Sorry, sorry. I the, the connection is not very good. I can't. Can you repeat your question? Uh, this commutative or Neumann algebra that you have constructed in this ethic at different times, will they commute with each other or not? You mean the which one? The yt or the zt? 
the y t and the, the, my my understanding is that you're setting y t and z t will commute to each other with different times too, but maybe yeah, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now Sorry, yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it now the uh, Tristan? How do I mean? I understand. What do you mean, Tristan? I just uh, want to. Well, why t cannot it should not commute? I mean, it can, but it should like the quantumness comes when uh, y t does not commute because it commutes with uh, z t. That is exactly my point. So, so why? Yeah. So, well, I, 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 y t at different time will commute with, with each other. Uh, z uh, z t. I mean, it's z t generates a commutative uh, from the algebra. And the idea, one of the points that the Markov property implies that why uh, it's because it's Markov that yt will also define the, all the yt's will define also a commutative from algebra. And so, it comes from the Markov approximation. I see. So right now, so, so right now, the let me... and yt do not commute with each other. Okay. And, the, and that is the central point. Then that's a central point that it's where the quantum has comes from. Yeah, and, but uh, uh, that was not clear to me from the HR presentation, actually. Was it clear to everybody else? Uh, I cannot say because for me it's obvious, but because I know this stuff. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, kind of the, 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 I don't think, I mean, the, 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 I mean I, so, so, so they chow, what commutes and what does not yeah. commute? Can you, can Sorry, you... I, I missed it. So yeah, I mean, the, for the yt, of course, it is commute with itself because the algebra generated by yt is commutative. There's no problem. In fact, the yt, because it is commutative, and we can, uh, by the spectral theorem, of course, we can transform it to the classical uh, stochastic process. And uh, in the future, in the next lecture, I will show that it's also a Brownian motion, in fact, in a, under another, another property measure. And the ZT, of course, we already showed that is a Brownian motion. Uh, what I said is not commutative. Sorry, I just, because the connection is not good, I, I didn't understand your question. Uh, what I said is no commutative is, is I mean, uh, it's not about the YT or the ZT. I mean, it's a different time for the ZT and the YT is not commutative. Okay. Okay. So okay. Thank. So it's, it's my it's my it's my problem. And I, I just want to add some words uh, for the. Uh, as you said, it's exactly the if it is commutative and self adjoint everything is perfect. We have the nice property. It, of course, it is is exactly the the classical case. I mean, but why it is interesting, because we want to add the the stochastic property, because before we have already some. Uh, for the irreversible, the precise, we have already the master equation to describe this, this property, okay, this uh, time evolution of the system, but it's not enough for our purpose. We want something more. So, so what, what the, the, the probabilist or the engineer did is they want to, uh, they want to, how to say that, estimate the precise, the estimate the interaction between the quantum system, the field and the system by some stochastic precise, by some noise, for example. And so what, what they did is just uh, they add some, the stochastic in this master equation. This is what I think, because we cannot add the equation directly, add the noise directly. So what they did is just, uh, we, we find some, uh, the stochastic precise and we, by the uh, second condensation, we transform to the, the quantum case and we use the, the time evolution has a book picture and we transform together where we calculated the, the evolution and then we use the spectral theorem and we, tra we transform it to the classical case again. So I mean, we can obtain the stochastic master equation, exactly the master equation, but just add some stochastic. So maybe we can obtain the more information. This is what I think. Do you agree with that uh, Tristan? I'm not sure I understood properly, so I... What I understood, I don't agree, but I wanted to to you. So maybe he can repeat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe he can explain it. I'm not sure I understood properly. Yeah, so in fact, yeah. Again, but slowly, to speak slowly, so we make sure we understand. Okay, okay. What I think is, because at the beginning, we have already the master equation. The master equation is just to trace out everything, the, the, everything in the field, and we can obtain, just to reduce the, the equation to describe the time evolution of the 
observable for the system. But for some physics, it's not enough for the, this information because they want something more. They want more information. And of course, it's not easy to, to calculate the whole time evolution of the whole system by the first principle, Hamiltonian, something like that. So they want to do is maybe we can just add some stochastic precise to estimate some noise, for example, to estimate the interaction, uh, the effect of the field on the system. Yeah, we want to language barrier yeah. here. It's kind of, you know, when you say some to add some stochastic process, to, I mean, physicists do not just add some things, the, the, these things have to have a meaning. So, so yeah, so, yeah, so, of course. It want to, what they wanted to, for example, um, for, for example, it's a free, the field, uh, we can use the Brownian motion, the just the white noise to, to, to something like okay. that. No, but also, I, I agree that, okay, like physicists also will add some noise but by, on basis of uh, physical arguments without proper limits and things like that. Is that okay? And also, these kind of quantum trajectories came up initially in physics for the purpose of simulations. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. the noise didn't mean anything. But it's, it's for me, it's a different, completely different approach from, uh, I mean, you get the yeah. same result at the end, but it's a completely different approach from quantum filtering. Like what you are describing is what, okay, um, uh, Barkeley has done and uh, people like in physics before, uh, I don't remember their name, but like they did that also, uh, Gizan and uh, Diozzi, they did it. And I mean, but it, it does, this picture, this physical picture, for me, doesn't correspond to, to quantum filtering, which is different. Quantum filtering is really like, okay, you have a noisy, in some physical limits, you, you can describe your system with, a, with the environment uh, through these quantum noises, and you know that you can do that in some cases. And then you assume that you measure your environment in like a specific uh, quadrature and observable, and you condition on the results of this measurement. And that's what you do when you do quantum filtering. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Okay, Francesco, do you have any comments? Well, <clears throat> my, um, my comments on this, um, would, I, I don't know, I have a few things in mind. Let's try to get them in order. Um, so it is true that when you end up doing your calculation and you have some assumption on, uh, for example, perfect detection on the process that you have, uh, you end up with the same stochastic equation that you would have uh, in a stochastic Schrodinger equation of the Gizen Diozzi type. Um, so there is a parallel there. Uh, and in some sense, um, it kind of, the, the filtering approach uh, gives another, gives like even like a more physical motivation to these stochastic models because you do end up with the same type of equations. So that's one thing I wanted to say. Uh, regarding the classical, um, uh, that regarding the fact that we are not really using quantum theory at um, like because we completely need it. Honestly, like I have, I would have to go back and double check all the steps and see where the quantumness comes in. But um, in in some sense, I think the the uh, classical behavior here is forced by the measurement and by the by a very practical consideration that we only at least um, th this is like a, not a fully um, uh, backed by proof sentence I'm gonna make like but we know how to do how to write the final equation in a simple closed form only for non-demolition measurements and that non-demolition property is what forces the classicalness uh, of the of the process and it's true that you could push back um, a classical descriptions of the objects at play here and start writing everything classical before. But then I feel like you kind of lose track of what, what, um, 
what are the objects you are considering? In some sense, I think this way is, uh, it overuses maybe classical, sorry, quantum notation, but in some sense it matches what happens physically. In some sense, in my head at least, everything is quantum up until the detectors. Okay, so it is true that what you're monitoring is uh, something that's uh, self-commuting and um, yeah, a, a commuting subalgebra. So it could be described classically, but it's also true that that's still a quantum field. So in I, I don't necessarily think it's so wrong to keep using quantum notation up until the detectors. Um, and also, it, I don't know, I think it kind of fascinates people in um, coming from, let's say, my field to see things um, in this way, because it, it still uses like quantum concepts, and, uh, but in a, as you, as you saw, like in, in a framework that's, uh, that mimics uh, the, the classical one. So um, I don't know, it might be a, a matter of, uh, I don't know, of, of preference. And to me, the, 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 the most compelling argument of keeping this notation is those are actually, I don't know, operator quantities up until they're measured. And uh, regarding why these things are classical is that this, because the, the non-demolition character of the measurements forces classicality and that allows us to write simple conditional expectation formulas and allows us to uh, write um, stochastic equation in a certain form that's viable um, for control design. So between Francesco and uh, Tristan, this was great. So, so kind of, uh, but maybe other people have questions, not just me. Kind of, so. so, thank you guys. So that was kind of very helpful. I think it really clarified a lot of stuff. I mean, it's uh, I'm not against using this notation. I mean, it's kind of maybe it's just I'm not against using a spectral measure when you have self a spectral theory. It's it's just kind of one has to see where it comes in, and I think it. And I think we got sort of really summarized it. It's a process of measurement that has to be classical, by the, because that's what you want to do. You, you want to do, and then secondly, the different times do not commute. Right, Tristan, absolutely sure. In different times, things will not commute. Just like for different vectors, you know, the, the I mean, you will have a different uh, kind of. Uh, you, have, you have Heisenberg uncertainty relations and. For different times, it will commute for different times. It's just that the uh, the transformed observable and by UT and the not untransformed do not commute. But at but different times, they will commute. If they if they do not commute, it does not define a commutative on the manager. But I mean, so right now, again, yeah, so what? So, but, but but if I but okay, but that's a question where you're going to put your UT kind of are you in Heisenberg or Schrodinger picture kind of right? So if if I if, am I correct? Yeah, 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 you can think of it like that. Yeah, okay, so, so okay, very good. So, kind of uh, because I think it would be really good to see whether, whether we can make this uh, experts on classical control theory like Wachagan and Armen actually kind of uh, see here the, 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 the picture because it's I don't think it's comp I don't think it's complicated at all, it just kind of looks complicated, but it's not. So, yeah, so. Uh, in fact, most. Uh, control our control papers on this stuff just skip all over this and just write the uh, the stochastic equation that you get in the end when there's a just classical noise and then it's a classical control problem uh, on uh, operators rather than vectors let's say okay. in classical control you you would have like a state in rn here you have a density operator or a um, hermitian observable but uh, but finite dimension, right? Yeah. Um, typically, but not always. You could want you might want to control a field. Okay, in which case it's a bit of a different story and becomes yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in those cases, then 
it's still true that they mostly resort to some kind of sort of like truncation of the infinite dimensional Hilbert space to have something they can treat. But in theory, you could deal with uh, infinite dimensional operators as your target too. Uh, excuse me, Francesco, just one question concerning you mentioned that uh, one can write also something, a control problem in the infinite dimensional case. Am I right? Is um, yeah, I, b I believe so. Yeah. Uh, most of I the mean, things I've done and, and are finite dimensional, but I, I think it's possible to uh, couple a field, like a field to a field, or to use uh, monitoring of, as, like, uh, for example, in the Hiroshi experiment, the target. Is um, is the number of photons in a cavity? So that's like a Fox space state. So that would be naturally infinite dimensional. Okay, yeah. Is is there any reference just to, just to have an idea what it looks like this infinite dimensional control system? Because uh, uh, you uh, still very confused about all this stuff. I. I... Um... Yeah, maybe not, not in I don't know, I don't know. I, 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 might, I might look something up. The thing is, um, I, 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 can, I can try to look it up. I think if you look at the work by Pierre Rouchon, okay. um, mm -hmm. it probably where he, where they derive the filtering equation for the, for the cavity, there, there are hints about how, how to do it in infinite dimensional cases. Uh -huh. The, the the caveat like in that in the in their model is that what they're monitoring is finite dimensional mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a flipped situation i don't have any um, thing in mind right now which is which is uh, monitoring an infinite dimensional field to control an infinite dimensional field in, within like this framework where you want to find a Belavkin filtering equation at the end, um, but it written in other terms, you will find it in the Wiseman Milburn book. Mm -hmm. but it's written by optical physicists for optical mm -hmm. physicists, so it's a little bit of a different okay. um, language, even if the underlying concepts are the same. I don't know if. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'll try to look up something. Maybe next time I'll, um, I'll I'll share it or before that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, well, are there any other questions or? So, so just a comment. Sorry, I, I was muted. So just to make sure that to, to, to make some very naive comment and to see whether. Francesco and, uh, and Tristan would agree with that. And I think, I think that may help uh, kind of people who are classical kind of, I mean, to a certain level, you can see this saying as just a, a matrix valued classical stochastic processes. Matrix valued, uh, matrix valued stochastic PDs. And then you ask, and then because matrices do not commit, that's, you have to ask questions uh, I, I'm not sure about this term matrix values, uh, PDEs. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, uh, uh, this means that the uh, unknown is an operator. This is what you mean? Yeah, an unknown is an operator. It's, it's kind of, you know, so, uh -huh. so do you agree with that, guys? I mean, just, just formally, kind of, you know, there are interpretations when you do to, but if you, you just would like to, to, to say pure mathematician, what is this about? Would you say it like that? I mean, it depends to whom you talk. I mean, no, no, no. Start, it depends <laughs> when you where you want to start. Like like Francesco said, like most people actually, like this quantum filtering stuff was done was done like in the the nine, like two two thousands and uh, began in the nineties basically uh, with Belavkin, and um, so now people start from the quantum trajectory, so the classic the classical process valued in uh, in uh, sorry in matrix space. Density matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, know, you can uh, also go. I mean, if you if you want, you can work only in the quantum space. Uh, if you are only interested, in, like in uh, YT, for example. If you are only interested in YT and not the underlying process, the underlying, uh, which is not the case in control, but 
uh, you are just uh, wondering about what is the properties of y keys, and you can work only in, on the quantum level and with quantum stochastic calculus. And so I would speak uh, to people like that. I would speak in terms of uh, fundamental algebras, committing fundamental algebras, and unitaries on uh, committing fundamental algebras. And I would I would explain that it's a generalization, like non-commutative generalization, which is not exactly a generalization, but you can think of it like that, of uh, Gersonov transformation. Yes, I mean, yeah, so because one, one, one can really can see a kind of, you know, even when you talk about the Lindbladians, Lindbladians are sort of just generalizations of the classical yeah. uh, Markov Mark process, right? You just be sort of, you're just allowed for non commutativity and you have a very good reasons to do so, but you can explain what mathematical issues are without entering into physics for people who do not have a background in physics. I think it's possible to, to, on the same level, and then you just study semi group which is, has a certain structure and then, and actually a lot of people do such that, you know, you have these uh, people who study from purely mathematical perspective, dynamical semi-groups and, you know, and then you can go quite far and they don't hear 